Ashutosh Mishra is with us to dissect the numbers. Ashutosh, we have the headline number and that's bang in line with our estimates at 2114 crores. NII stands at 3192 crore rupees. Are you assessing that this is a fairly stable and inline set of numbers? Yeah, the number is uh, fairly stable and in line with uh, what we were expecting. Definitely on year on comparison, uh, the base impact was uh, higher because of the uh, SGFC Life IPO. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, SGFC MC IPO. Uh, so uh, uh, other than that, it's look good. But the key things to watch will be the <coughs> what is the disbursement growth as well as what is the loan book growth. And it, it, where is this coming? Whether it is coming from uh, your... Uh, uh, wholesale segment or it is coming from retail segment. All right, that will be important to watch out for. Okay, the disbursement growth provisions, though, have reduced quite considerably on a sequential basis to come in at 116 crores from about 400 crore rupees. Um, how are you reading into that provision number so, at 116 crores, Ashutosh? So, so lower provisioning is because of their move to the NDS. So yeah, under the NDS, uh, basically uh, provision are done on the basis of the uh, expected loss basis. So if you look at the housing hall portfolio, normally they tend to be have very low uh, uh, slippages uh, or NPA in the over the long period of time. That's why the provisioning requirement compared to the earlier accounting standard is far lower for the housing finance company. So that's why you are getting, you no, know, especially all across the housing finance company, provision expenses are coming down under the NDS. Is it? All right. Um, well, I, be, I believe we also have Sanjeev Basin now joining in. Uh, Sanjeev, would you attribute the lower provisions to the change in NDS at 116 crores? And how are you reacting to the PAT growth at 2,114 crore rupees? Yeah, so I think uh, that's in line in what the new ADS norms are. But the uh, profit after tax is, I think, a beat slightly from our estimate. And also the net interest income, which I just overlooked, 3192 is a very, very big positive. So, so Avan, if uh, the story is open, I think we will wait for the color which they give us. But HDFC and Bajaj Finance would be two of the beneficiaries of this whole uh, embroidery on uh, NBFCs. And they will be garnering more market share. So I would be uh, actually waiting for uh, to hear guidance, which I think will pleasantly surprise on the upside. Because not only will they get more market share, they will also be able to get more better quality of assets. And, and I think, uh, like, like I said, this would be one of our top picks in the mortgage finance uh, space. That. But gentlemen, stay with us. Quickly take it across to Poonam Sani as well, my colleague, for a quick Insta analysis on the numbers. Poonam? Well, I would say uh, good numbers largely in line with our own poll estimates. In fact, uh, if you look at the profitability, it's uh, 2114 is the uh, profits, uh, which is uh, fairly in line with what we were expecting. We were expecting a number of 2100 crore. Now, of course, there was a huge amount of uh, one time gain in the same quarter last year pertaining to uh, IPO of HDFC life insurance, and because of which uh, if we compare the YOI profit, we're seeing a contraction. But adjusting for that, I think the profit growth is anyway around 6 or percent on a YOI basis. In fact, if you look at the net interest income also, fairly in line with what we were working with. We were working with a number of 30.95 crore. Uh, net interest income at 31.90 crore. 31.92 crore is what we see. This is the calculated net interest income that I'm uh, referring to. More or less, if we are even looking at the provisions, the provisions this quarter has come down to 116 crore. Um, in fact, of course, uh, as expected uh, from the Q3 update, there is not too much of uh, capital gains during this quarter. Uh, and also the dividend income has been fairly lower. But, and hence, that is the reason we're seeing this kind of a muted of, uh, profit growth. But by and large, more or less, we're seeing... Uh, stable uh, quarter for HDFC Limited even this time. We'll of course wait and watch out for more numbers on the AUM as well as the asset quality. Uh, but uh, Mr. Basing, what is your view in terms of the uh, numbers right now? Uh, because HDFC Limited is the biggest lender in the HFC space and given the kind of um, liquidity crisis that we have seen uh, what is your expectation uh, from the commentary? What is it that you would be watching out for? So, like I said, two things. One, I would expect them to be garnering more market share. And I think now with the, most of the OMOs over and in process, they would be much more easier liquidity. 
plus you know most of the smart players have been able to uh, uh, rejuvenate themselves by raising more money and i think uh, like i said for us hdfc would be the primary donor which will lead from the front we also think in the budget there will be a lot of more soft for msmes and the housing finance uh, small scale housing and which i indirectly should benefit uh, the likes of hdfc and lic housing Right. Uh, do you expect too much of uh, asset quality issues for HDFC Limited? Because by and large, what we have seen so far, they have been able to uh, manage good asset quality. Uh, what is your sense on, on the same? Definitely, you know, they are one of the most prudent lenders who are very, very cautious on the asset quality. And that's been historically why this trades at almost five times price to book. So I don't see any change in that. I think, like I said, if you want to be in this space, then HDFC continues to be the best place to be uh, in, in the mortgage finance. And, and like I said, I think they should be upping the guidance given that OMOs are very positive and much, much of the uh, you know, problems of uh, ILFS may have you know, now been put on the ba maybe behind us. Okay. Uh, Ashutosh, uh, what is your sense in terms of the valuation and how would you go about in the pecking order uh, within the HFCs given the kind of uh, stress that we are seeing in terms of liquidity and also concerns in the real estate? So, um, uh, one of the most important points for SDFC uh, Limited is that they are the best uh, in managing the liquidity in a more efficient way. And that has also been shown in the last three, four months also. Uh, yeah, I believe so. The, the, the way they have diversified their volume profile over the period of time, it's clear, clearly see that management has a much larger vision than the many other agencies which is uh, there in the uh, space. So we continue to see that you now they will continue to gain market share because of this whole crisis. There are many players who may be going out of the market or maybe very slow in disbursement. So IGFC Limited will be the major gainer of this whole thing. I don't find any issue on the liquidity front for HDFC Limited as such because you have to understand that HDFC Limited is a totally different player compared to any other HFC because this is, it, it has a major stake in a bank from where it derived a major part of its business. It, is a, it, it has a major stake in life insurance uh, and other uh, financial services business. So it is totally different from any other uh, HFC, uh, HFCs are at this point of time. And that's really, you know, uh, you know, is also one of the most attractive points for any debt investor also, you know, to uh, invest uh, or to fund HFC limited for their growth. We're running out of time, and my producer asked me to wind up. But uh, net interest margins at 3.5 and spreads at 2.26% uh, this time. The individual loan book uh, growth has been at 17 odd percent on an AUM basis. Even if I'm looking at uh, in terms of further details, uh, we're seeing a fairly um, uh, fairly stable growth for HDFC Limited. And also, if I'm uh, trying to look at the margins as well as the spreads, spreads have remained fairly stable during this quarter. In terms of the NPAs as well. Um, NP stand at 1.22% uh, in terms of the overall loan book portfolio. Uh, this is as per the NHP norm. So I would say barely good quarter uh, for uh, uh, for HTFC Limited. Some amount of inch up in terms of the NPS is seen. Uh, but um, given the time constraints, I guess we'll have to wind up on this. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Basin, as well as Ashutosh. And with this, it is back to you, Aisha.